Hi there, this is another video for Radio Lover who designed this thing. It's the review of the model AMT MW207, AMT MW207 medium wave modulator slash transmitter. I am a semi-professional radio enthusiast. I've had an apprenticeship in electronics and over more than two decades I'm into radio circuits, building my own transmitters and radios and so this review you get here is so to speak, from a semi-professional electronics guy. Anyhow, I have to say that I'm biased when it comes to these transmitters because years long, actually more than a decade, I attempted to get various companies and sellers to sell one of my transmitters. I design a transmitter, they sell it, they can get, they can keep all the money they earn, they can uh, supply the parts themselves or I offered them a co-work and always I got denied. I have a transmitter here. This is a very simple circuit. You can see it's much more tiny. And this thing here is a transmitter from 520 kilohertz from the beginning of the AM band up to 1620. And if you compare the size, you can see it's much smaller, it's smaller and it doesn't use expensive components. When I talk about expensive components, I mean this variable capacitor, which has maybe 500 picofarads, maybe it has 240, something in this area. And this farad rod antenna is also very expensive. Well, maybe not in China, but here these parts are very expensive. And my circuit uses only simple and cheap components. A potentiometer for aligning the frequency, no coil, all transistors, and still, if you measure the output with an oscilloscope, you will see that it produces a very clean sine wave all over the whole band. Still, thrown away, mine gets denied, this one gets published and gets all the fame and all the forum posts, the YouTube vids, and so I thought, hey, why don't you buy one of these, one of these transmitters yourself and check it out. Well, here's my review as a radio expert in hobby level of this transmitter kit. I supplied it with completely new... Uh, Double A, uh, I opened this package and these uh, batteries that are in the transmitter are completely new. Uh, so it's supplied with full batteries. And what I'm going to check is how is the audio quality? How is the frequency accuracy? The scale in relation to the numbers. So if I tune it to 6, it should be 600 kilohertz. If I tune it to 7, it should be 700 and so far and so on. How is, this is important, how is the frequency uh, modulation. Does it have parasitic frequency modulation? If you build a simple transmitter, uh, what happens is that when you apply modulation, in this case music from my tablet, if you apply modulation, it can happen that uh, not only the amplitude uh, upside down is modulated, also the frequency from left to right is modulated. And what then happens is that you will have to tune your radio next to the frequency. And this is not good because on some radios this can cause hissing sound, static sound, and it will generally reduce the range. Hence, the radio isn't properly tuned to the frequency. So a good transmitter, mine, which people don't care about, obviously, uh, sorry, I'm a bit biased, <laughs> uh, is having a good amplitude modulation and no frequency modulation. Uh, let's see about this. So the first thing I'm going to check is how accurate is the frequency. Therefore, I turn it on. And my radio is tuned to 600 because it doesn't go down all the way to 520. It goes to 530 something. And now if I tune it to 600, we should hear the music. But we can't hear it if I go to between 600 and 700, which would be 650. We can hear it. So the frequency scale is not accurate. This is the first thing that I noticed. Of course, I previously tested the transmitter before I recorded this video, but I want to show it live. The transmitter, by the way, comes with a manual in Chinese. On the other side, you have the schematic, and I don't show the schematic in respect to the developer because this is their circuit, and I'm not publishing their circuit because it's not my circuit. But yes, you get a Chinese manual, and I think what they want to tell you here is that you can uh, align this scale. So we would have to remove the battery uh, compartment, and there are screws on the other side of this tuning capacitor. And then, then you can tune it to like 600. 
And with the help of the screws on the background, you can align it so this matches with the frequency you are having your radio set on. The next thing I want to check is the modulation quality. And here I, I will uh, take away a few things because the modulation quality is at the best at the bottom. I'll come to that in a moment and show you what parasitic FM means. But first we are going to have a listen to how this thing sounds. I have some active speakers here. Two of them, uh, they are going to replay what is being transmitted. And I have my vintage radio and let's align it. And the first thing that I hear, heard or hear, let's increase the volume a bit. You can also increase the volume there. The audio quality is the audio quality is really good. I have to give it a point for that. The audio quality is decent. Decent to really good. And now the first thing that I wanted to check is how bad is the parasitic frequency modulation. That means if I tune my radio exactly to the frequency, the music should be playing, whilst it shouldn't be playing when I tune it to the side of the frequency. If it would have bad frequency modulation, it would be the opposite. If I tune my radio exactly on the ground wave, the music or sound would be heavily distorted or even completely disappear, and as soon as I tune it to the side of the frequency, it would suddenly appear. The scale here is broken, so the style is not matching. It's, see, I can tune, but it doesn't move anymore. And now, if you are experienced with radio stuff, listen to how I tune the radio to the ground wave and see if it has FM or if, if it has a good AM. And good AM. Ah, okay, tuning. That's the side of the frequency, not spot on. There's the center. And we are having a very good amplitude modulation. Yes, this is how it's supposed to be. Excellent. I'm pleased. On the lower frequency, 550 or it's probably somewhere else, 540 or something, it does produce a very good decent signal. Let's listen to the quality a bit. The quality is really good. I'm playing no copyright music. I hope YouTube appreciates that. Here's the volume control. Good. So the transmitter is having a really good sound. It has a good high treble and bass response. It's not producing parasitic FM at lower frequencies. It's working very well and it's wirelessly coupling into my radio. By the way, I bought this from a German uh, store and when I received it, they had CE and L-O-H-S compliance signs on it. So, whatever. <laughs> okay, but now let's check out the details. We figured out that the frequency scale isn't accurate. I can, can tune in other frequencies and it will stay unaccurate over the whole band. But like I said, and like they describe it in the manual, using a screwdriver underneath the tuning dial, you can bring it in and probably set it that the scale here matches with the frequency you are transmitting on. But now watch. I will not change I will not change the volume here. I will not change the volume here. And now I'm going to say 1200. I have not changed any volume. And it's still doing somewhat okay, although it seems that it slowly starts to get some FM. The volume stayed the same, which is good. Now let's go on top of the AM band. And there we have it, parasitic FM. So you have frequency modulation now. This is, this is spot on. It's very silent, it's very distorted. I increase the volume on my speakers, not on the transmitter.
trying to bring it in. Now it's very clear, but I'm not spot on frequency. For example, if this would be my frequency, if I'm transmitting on 600, just an example, I would have to tune the radio on like, let's say, 604, something like this to make it good audible. This is very hard to tune with one hand. This is very cheap and very hard to tune, but it works. Anyhow, uh, so here is it, frequency modulation. Here you can hear how bad it is. And this is not what you want to have. So uh, these are very full batteries and I noticed something else. If you don't use alkaline batteries, I used uh, 1.25 volt batteries. Also what changes is if you increase the uh, frequency, the volume of the transmitter also will increase. That means if you increase the frequency, you will have to decrease the volume or the sound gets distorted. Okay, so far the frequency is off. The scale does not match with the frequency on your radio. No problem, you can align that. So this, this is neutral, neutral. The next thing is on low frequencies, it does produce a decent AM signal. This is nice, but on higher frequencies, the higher the frequency you get, the worse the AM gets. You can get very bad frequency modulation, even on a thousand kilohertz if the batteries aren't completely full. I did some longer tests outside this video with this device. And now we have another thing here and it says monitor. Here you can see it, these two connectors. And what they do is they offer a connection where you can solder on a shielded wire and connect it directly to your vintage radio. And you can see there is the main coil, the big coil, and apart from it is a small coil and this is the coupling coil. And what the coupling coil does is, it does take the signal from the ferret staff and convert it into a voltage and apply it here so you can connect it directly to your radio. I look in the manual just to confirm what I know already. Yes, okay. If you look at the, yeah, I have shown part of the schematic, I didn't want to do that. Uh, in the schematic, they show that the coil is electrically connected to the rest of the circuit, which makes no sense. So one side here is RF output and the other side goes to like plus from this. And some old radios have a so-called hot chassis, that means if you plug them in into the wall socket and plug them in the wrong way, the mains voltage, in theory, can be on the radio's connectors. For example, the antenna connector. Usually in the radio there is a capacitor to prevent any harm or damage, but a 50, 60, 70 year old capacitor, as you know, can fail, it can short. And what you then have is you have mains voltage going into your transmitter, going into your laptop or whatever, and you get a short circuit, or you can even get electric shock from it. They could have done it very simple. They could have this coil connected to both of these connectors and isolated from the rest of the circuit and just so you would have an isolation between this coil and your radio and it would be safe and would be well usable. But I cannot understand what they were thinking. They thought connecting it to the uh, circuit would somehow be good. Anyhow, so this is the review of this transmitter. Dear radio lover who has all the fame I always wanted to have, people making videos about your circuits. People in forums discussing the circuit, this is all I wanted to achieve, try it over a decade and you make this thing in 2020. I think the first version appeared in 2020 and you get all the fame I want. And here is even a video from me, so even from me you get your video, but as you see, I'm critical. I'm showing what this thing can do, I'm showing what it can do. And whoever wants to buy it, here is your decision. You can buy it, it does work on lower frequencies, it does produce a very good audio signal on lower frequencies but don't try the higher frequencies. About the power consumption, if you turn it off, you will see that the LED stays on for quite a while. So this means it just draws a few milliamps. It probably will run 30, 40, 50 hours with one battery pack. 50 hours runtime, I'm sure it will do. Okay, so this was my review of the, what was it called? Let's see in the manual. Uh, AMT-MW207. amt dash MW207 radio transmitter slash modulator. About the range, the range you can get with it is about 50 centimeters from this to a normal radio. There you have a very clear non-static signal, but after 50 centimeters it slowly starts to, this, this, the signal starts to fade out, starts to have static, but this is okay because for most cases the range of this transmitter is okay. So, dear, dear radio lover, not the best job, but overall a good job, especially the PCB layout. 
Okay, thank you for watching. Best greetings from Stefan.